Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we will be looking at while loops and do while loops in PHP. So to kick things off, we will start by creating a new file and we will call this one the while do while loop. Now, originally I would have split them into two, so I'm just going to actually merge these two this link into one, so it's while do while loop.php. And so I'm going to remove that reference here. And then I'm going to say sample while slash do while. Now in our previous exercise, we would have looked at the for loop and the for loop we would have characterized as a counter control loop because what it does is counts to a certain value and each time it checks if that value has exceeded another value and so it decides to whether it continues or it exits the for loop is called a counter controlled loop the while and do while loops however are called condition control loops because really and truly they aren't counting they aren't concerned about counting what they are concerned with is if a certain value meets a specific criteria and or criterion and then it makes a decision so we'll just hop on over to our while do while file and we will do our html template and we will give our document the correct type title which would be do slash sorry while slash do while loop loops now i've prepped the page with two h1 tags one for the while loop section and one for the do while section and so we will be looking at them in separate code blocks but then we'll see how similar they are and why i decided to put them all in one lesson so let's start with our while loop. The first thing we need is our PHP tag. And then the syntax for a while loop is that we say the word while, and then we open our parentheses and you would see that that's a pattern. Every time you're going to do a loop or a certain kind of control structures, you just have to have the parentheses. Don't violate that rule and you won't have a hard time. So while, and then what we need inside of these parentheses would be a condition. So the condition could be while some variable, let's say grade is less than 10. And then this would be my condition. Now it would kind of look very similar to the while loop, but the difference is that there's nothing else that goes inside of these parentheses. It's only a condition. And the condition once again is comparing some value or variable on the left to some value or even variable on the right. And this is the comparison tool. In this case, we're looking at if it is less than it could be equal to it could be equal or greater than etc etc so i'm just doing a while this condition obtains then curly braces do some action all right so i'm just going to declare my variable and please note if you try to reference a variable without first declaring it that would be a problem so i'm going to just initialize it to zero and then we will say while grade is less than 10, we want to echo maybe a p tag saying I am less than 10. All right, so I'll just put a p tag here and I am less than 10. Exclamation sign. All right, and then close my p tag. So what this is expected to do is do this action while this condition is not true meaning as long as grade is less than 10 then it will continuously do this now you will notice that when i browse this page it will generate infinitely many of these echo statements and that would be because we will be locked in what we call an infinite loop all right so an infinite loop comes about because there is no condition to or this condition would never get met because I'm not doing anything to grade. Grade is, going, is zero. I'm not changing the value of grade anywhere. And so grade will always be zero. So grade will always be less than 10, meaning this will 
always print. So that's one of the dangers with a while loop. You can run into that kind of error. Now, if I try to browse to this page, I can expect a problem because the while loop will run almost indefinitely. Well, very indefinitely until at least the machine or the server runs out of resources to perform the action. And so here we have it. It's less than 10 and you can see that the machine is really struggling because I'm getting that loading sign. And if you look over the scroll bar, it's just continuously printing because grade is just not ever going to be equal to 10. So I'm just going to close this quickly and then I'm going to rectify this situation. So what we want is to ensure that our condition will get met. If it doesn't, we are in an infinite loop. So I'm just going to leave a comment here and say infinite loop so that you know exactly what is happening there. But then I'm going to comment this out and then I'm going to go below that and I'm going to write another while loop that would probably actually you know, exit at some point. So I'm going to repeat this and I'm going to say grade less than 10. And then inside this, I'm going to carry out my action just the same. So I'm almost writing the same loop, except I'm actually going to deliberately on each run change the value of grade. All right. So that is another thing. You can actually kind of simulate a count all right, but then that is a manual step. Once again, this is a condition control loop. So this does not facilitate the use of any counters, but then for our purposes, we can always count and and, and change the grade, the, the value of grade or whatever method you want to use, you can use that method to change the value of grade. So I'm just going to say grade plus plus, as we saw in the for loop, the plus plus is like an auto incrementer. So what will happen is that grid starts off as zero, then it hits the while loop. And then this condition holds true because grid is less than zero, uh, less than 10. Then it echoes that and then it increments and then it hits here and comes back and checks the condition again is grid less than 10. Grid at that point would be one. So it's still less than 10. So it goes again and does the same thing and over and over and over until grade eventually becomes 10, at which point 10 is no longer less than 10. 10 is equal to 10, not less than. So then it would exit the loop. So I'm just going to echo a quick statement here so that we know when it exits the loop and say exit loop. All right. And so I'm going to browse to this page again. So when I click on the while do while, I see that it ran one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, and then it exited. So it did exactly what we expected because once it hit that condition no longer being true, then it exited. So now that we've addressed the while loop and what we call the while loop is a precondition loop, meaning it checks the condition before it does an action, which means if I started off with the value of grade being 10, and then I refresh that particular page, I would never ever get into the loop because guess what? It checked the condition and it realized that, well, grade is already 10. So clearly I can't do anything here. So it just went on to the next available statement. All right. So we call that a precondition loop. Now, if you're in a situation where you need something to be done at least once, but then repeated, if a condition is not met, then we have our do while, which is called a post condition loop. So I'm going to initialize another PHP block here. And as I said, you can initialize them almost as many times as you need to. Of course, use your discretion and your you know, creativity and your efficiency, of course. But when we initialize this block, what we want to do is say do, and then we open our curly braces. So do, and then inside the curly braces, we know by now, we always put whatever it is that the action should be for that particular control structure. So we say do, open curly brace, and then we put in any action. So I'm just going to print here and I'm going to say I am do while loop, just so we know exactly what's being printed.
All right. So I am do while loop, but you see that there's a, a little red squiggly line under this because we're not finished. What we need to do after we have done this at least once is then check if the condition obtains. So I can reuse the same condition and the same syntax where I open the brace and then I say grade less than 10. And then I end with a semicolon. I'm sorry, I'm missing out a keyword. I did say that it is do while. So I have to say do this while conditions. Apologies. So we do an action while the condition. So what will happen once again is that it will do it at least once. So I'm going to set this to zero. So grade is zero. So the expectation is that it will do this while the grade is less than 10. And once again, if we don't count, then we will run into that infinite loop situation. So to avoid that, I'm just going to deliberately change the value of grade each time. So I'm just going to do that at the end of all the actions. Then I morph this value so that eventually it will meet the condition. So you don't want to do that morphing in the middle of your actions. So let me just refresh this page and see what happens under our do while loop section. So we reset grade to zero and you can see that grade is is serving multiple purposes. So that's one of the advantages to using variables. You can set it once and then use it multiple times throughout your code. So because it's zero, our while loop is active once again and our do while has done this action at least once. Now, the reason for it doing it at least once is the fact that by the time this one variable has finished with the while loop, remember that it would have incremented up to 10. So when it hits the do while loop, then its value is already 10. And so it did this at least once, then this went up to 11 because it was already 10 by the end of the for the while loop, sorry. And so when it hit the condition, this was 11 and that's 10. So that does not hold true, so it would have exited. So once again, the do while will do everything at least once and then check the condition. And that's why we call it a post condition loop. So I'm just going to add that comment right above the do while code block and say that it is a post condition loop. So what I'm going to do just to make sure that we get the most out of our do while loop here is in the code block for the do while loop, I'm going to reset grade to be zero. So you can always set the value of your variable whenever you want. Yes, you set it once up here, but I want it to be something else down here. So I'm setting it again. And then I will refresh my page. And what will happen is that the while loop gets the value zero and it loops and loops and loops until it's 10. And then the do while resets it to zero and then it will run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times also. All right. And we could have put something outside to say exit loop and then we would know when it actually finished executing. So I'll just refresh and there we go. Exit loop. All right. So that's pretty much it for the while and the do while loops. You just need to know when to use which one. If you need something done at least once, you use your do while. If not, you use your while. And otherwise, if you need to keep count of the number of times, definitely, like you definitely know how many times something should run, then your for loop is probably best. So you can use them at your discretion.